I'm Melissa. And I'm Jam. And I'm a chemist. And I'm not. And welcome to Chemistry for Your Life. The podcast that helps you understand the chemistry of your everyday life. Jim, how are you doing this week? I'm doing really great. How about you? I'm doing good. I realized, though, I forgot to mention last week uh-huh. that the idea for my curly hair show came tangentially from Vianette. So our uh, friend, friend of the show. Yes, friend of the show. Vianette said mm-hmm. that she was interested in cosmetic chemistry. Uh A long time ago. And this isn't exactly cosmetic chemistry, but Mm -hmm. I did have the idea from that conversation. So is Vianette a curly girl? Vianette is a curly girl. So this one's that one was for you, Vianette. That one was for you. And Vianette was very hype when she (laughs) she sent me a long list of questions. Uh She was very, very hype about that episode. So and then I realized I didn't even shout her out. I remember she's probably the person I've heard talk about curly stuff the most. Oh, yeah. She's a big proponent of the curly girl method. She's mm-hmm. all on the curly girl Reddit, says read the handbook. She's very with it. <laughs> okay, let's jump right in. I'm ready. Let's do it. Last week, we talked about disulfide bonds. Yes. The bonds between two sulfurs that form the bend in curly hair. Uh huh. So that's important about hair. Okay. That is a piece that holds hair together. Uh-huh. It's part of the structural integrity of the hair. Mm-hmm. But there's more to hair than just disulfide bonds. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of intermolecular forces. Oh, here they show up again. <laughs> They're back. I told you they were going to be in everything. These midichlorians are in everything. <laughs> Have you seen that episode of Parks and Rec where they trick the lady by saying there's a metachlorian count in the soil? <laughs> No. It's <laughs> so good. Oh, gosh. <laughs> this, what an infamous <laughs> addition to the Star Wars universe. When they did that, it's like, gosh. Yeah. So, anyway. Well, Parks and Rec. <laughs> someone was hacking her email, and they pretended to report on the midichlorian count in the soil, <laughs> and the lady took it. Hook, line, and sinker. It does sound like a real thing. It I does. Mean, because chlor sounds chlorine, like chlorine. Yeah. So, everything sounds normal in it. So, I mean, not to me, but okay. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, in an email or to a layperson, it's like, oh, yeah. Thanks. So not just any old intermolecular forces, although I'm sure all of them are at play between the structures and proteins. Uh-huh. But there is our special favorite kind, my favorite kind, I guess. Your the favorite kind? Intermolecular force known as hydrogen bonding. That's your favorite? I didn't know that. That's the strongest one, though, right? I think so, just because it's in everything. I like dispersion because of the geckos. Mm, that's true. That just is like kind of cool. But so, so hydrogen is the strongest. Hydrogen is the strongest and it is present in our hair because there are hydrogens bonded to nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, which mm-hmm. makes it available for hydrogen bonding. Okay. And hair is porous. Okay. It means it's it's semi-permeable. Water can get into the strands of hair that we have. That makes sense in so, terms of our like showering and stuff like that. It's absolutely. not like it just, the water does stay in there. Mm -hmm. The water goes in. It doesn't just bounce off. Yeah. Now, remember, hydrogen bonding, though, also isn't just a bond between two atoms. It's not a Mm -hmm. true bond. It's like an interaction between two molecules Mm -hmm. that's very brief. It's the strongest of all the intermolecular forces, but intermolecular forces are not bonds. Right. Right, right, right. So compared to those disulfide bonds that were really strong, Mm -hmm. these intermolecular forces, hydrogen bonds, are relatively weaker than a disulfide bond. Oh, that's interesting Mm -hmm. because it's not a bond. Right. So a legit bond is just going to be stronger than a Mm -hmm. not legit bond. Oh, yeah. Okay. 100% of the time. I don't know. 100% is a bold thing to say. Yeah, that was pretty bold. I'm going to walk that back. At least at a 99, something like that. Uh, In any instance, I can currently call to my mind a real true bond is stronger than an intermolecular force. Okay, got it. So the way that water is absorbed into your hair as it goes into those pores, it's actually doing the hydrogen bonding because water has hydrogen bonding possible because Mm -hmm. it's hydrogen bonded oxygen. Mm -hmm. It can hydrogen bond with the proteins in your hair. Oh, okay. So the oxygen and water can form intermolecular forces with the hydrogens and the proteins that make up your hair. Mm -hmm. The polar molecules like nitrogen in the... Amino acids of Mm -hmm. your proteins of your hair could maybe form intermolecular forces with the hydrogens in the water. So there is hydrogen bonding going on between water and the proteins that make up your hair. Oh, wow. That's weird. Mm Mm-hmm. 
I wouldn't have thought it would be like that. That's just like it. Yep, your, my hair's wet. But what is we talked about things getting wet were right. intermolecular forces. Yeah, yeah. And if there's no way for the molecules to interact, then it's waterproof. Right. So yeah, they're interacting for sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's weird. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when you add water to your hair, it does get a little bit more flexible, mm -hmm. but it doesn't say styled very well when it's wet. Right. Right. All that makes sense. All that is because water molecules in your hair are disrupting whatever hydrogen bonding is taking place between the proteins of the hair itself. Okay. Okay. Got it. So we've got our disulfide bonds that are true bonds that are really super tight holding hair in place. It uh -huh. gives it its natural shape that doesn't go away really. Uh -huh. And then we have hydrogen bonds that are more temporary. Okay. That are weaker intermolecular forces that can be impacted and manipulated more easily. Okay. Both of those keep our hair strands together mm -hmm. and have everything to do with styling mm -hmm. your hair. That is crazy. It is crazy. It's just so much deeper than like, I mean, this is everything <laughs> we talk about basically, but I think hair just feels like such an everyday deal um, that I wouldn't have even thought to put in the chemistry category in the first place. Like that's why I think it's like a little bit like, whoa, more so than some other things because like carbonated water or cooking something mm -hmm. or soap. Those all to me like are already like, oh yeah, there's probably chemistry for sure. Yeah. But I'm, I'm just a little bit like, oh yeah, dang it. Hair is chemistry. Hair products, obviously chemistry. If you get down into it, everything is made up of atoms and yeah. then that means that everything is mm -hmm. chemistry. How did you guys get atoms into everything, by the way? I haven't really figured that out We're yet. We're super good. Wow. And we have a secret society that does that. Does that before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. This is the kind of stuff the government does not want us to know. <laughs> okay, back to reality. So if you're going to heat style your hair. Okay. Even when your hair feels dry, there's still some water molecules in it. That's just the name of the game. Okay. When you heat style your hair, mm -hmm. you are using heat to evaporate those water molecules mm -hmm. and giving your hair an opportunity to form intermolecular forces, hydrogen bonds, between new parts of your hair. Okay. So by heating it, you're disrupting the hydrogen bonding that's taking place between the water and your hair mm -hmm. and allowing new bonds to form, hydrogen bonds to form temporarily mm -hmm. between different parts of your hair, giving it a different shape than it would normally take. That is crazy. And so is that why, like, say you spend a lot of time doing something with your hair with, like, either, either curling it or you're straightening it, mm -hmm. and then you go outside, and if it's really humid... It undoes mm -hmm. what you just did? A hundred percent. That's crazy. Water molecules are coming back in and disrupting the hydrogen bonds that you forced yeah. into place with your heat styling yeah. and taking your hair back to the way it was before. They're like, some hair that doesn't have hydrogen yes. go bond going on. Doesn't like, have water in it. Yeah, it doesn't mm -hmm. have water in it. And we're a bunch of water hanging out in the air. Mm -hmm. And it's like, like flies to a barbecue. Into the permeable parts of your hair. Yeah. A hundred percent. That's exactly what happens. That's interesting. I did not know that. And that's why a shower messes up heat styling too. Right. Which that makes sense. I mean, we're used to doing that on purpose sometimes to like reset, mm -hmm. but then it makes sense. It's like, oh, you're introducing a bunch of water mm -hmm. and it's just going to kind of reset whatever yeah. you did. And it goes back to having hydrogen bonds between the water and the hair. Yeah. Wow. Amazing, right? That's crazy. My mind was blown. I didn't know this. I found this out last week. There was a really cool video mm -hmm. on the American Chemical Society website that explained it and a, f and a few websites where I learned what I'm about to teach you about perms. And I, I was uh -huh. like, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> I've been curling my hair for so long and it never even occurred to me to ask why water makes it be frizzy because you just know that it does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just know. Yeah, these things, we, we know what they do. Not that we know why. We just know that that a put the equals c mm -hmm. and so we just have known that forever and yeah. so we're just content with not even knowing what a and b are yeah we're just like no that equals c my wife and i both have really fine straight hair mm -hmm. one thing we both have a problem with is that styling it is just really hard it seems like it doesn't take much for the style thing we've tried to do like mine's just like some hair product or whatever but 
um, M might try to straighten or curl or whatever. It just doesn't take much for it to just get undone. Hmm. And I wondered if if it's because the strands of hair themselves are a lot finer to some degree. Yeah. And maybe it's just really easy for the hydrogen bonding to happen mm-hmm. again with mm-hmm. moisture in the air yeah. and just take back over and undo what we just did. Maybe so. That's like a little bit of like layman science kind of thing, but we both have the same problem and our hair is really similar. Yeah. I wonder too, sometimes people say dirty hair will hold that better. Uh-huh. And I wonder if it's because it's almost a layer that's yeah. sort of between you and the hydrogen or the water coming in and reforming the hydrogen bond that yeah. wants to. I only wash my hair like every six days or so. And the That's last, insane. yeah, the last day is always the best. Do you shower more than that? Oh yeah. Just wanted everyone yeah. to know that you weren't gross. I'm glad you asked that because I would have just gone unsaid. I shower <laughs> every day. I just only wash my hair with like shampoo, meaning mm-hmm. um, every six days or so. Do you let water get in it every time you shower? Yeah. So basically you just don't use shampoo except once every. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some curly girls only use conditioner to wash their hair. It's called co-washing. Yeah. And actually... You're not really supposed to, I've read that originally conditioner and shampoo weren't like intended to be used in tandem like we do, like in one sitting. We're like, shampoo, conditioner, all right. And that's like not really why this were initially created. I don't really know the history of it. Me but neither. I've, that's what I've heard. We can, well, if there's anyone out there who knows history of shampoo, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah. Teach and us also, what we don't know. And tell us why it's called shampoo. Conditioner makes sense. Shampoo, where the heck did that word come from? That's a great question. Okay, back into it. This is, <laughs> this is a real tangent yeah. heat episode. So that's how heat styling works. Okay. And that's why it's only temporary. So you got it. You totally understood why that happens. Now, do you mm-hmm. want to talk about perms? Yes, please. Okay. Perms are amazing Uh because they don't break with water Uh because they're not formed from hydrogen bonds the way curls or heat styles are. Mm -hmm. The way perms work is by altering your disulfide bonds. Whoa. So they're getting down into it. They're getting down into it. So Uh usually they set your hair however you want it to be in curlers or whatever. Uh So say you want curly hair. Mm -hmm. They'll put your hair in curlers and then they will apply an agent. Mm Mm-hmm. It's usually a sulfur containing something, which mm-hmm. is why it smells bad because sulfur smells bad to us. Uh huh. And they'll apply this all over your hair to break your sulfide bonds. It is something that will come in and basically just break apart the sulfide bonds. Okay. And once your sulfide bonds are broken, it's like your hair is a blank slate. Mm-hmm. It has nothing that's holding it into place. Uh huh. But they've put it in the new position you want it to be in. So then they put a different chemical that helps the sulfide bonds reform Uh in the curly position because your hair is already in that position Uh and it fuses your hair back into that shape permanently. That is crazy. So you break the sulfide bonds in their natural state and then you reform them the Mm -hmm. way you want them to be. Wow. What the heck? I know. That is nuts. And it also seems like... How is that even possible? Like I, I, I get the steps that you're saying, but it does feel a little bit like, so we're just able to break the bonds and then put them back. Listen, organic chemistry is all about that. I yeah. can manipulate atoms and make them go exactly where I want to go. And mm-hmm. I'm always sort of a little bit thinking, this is insane that we can do this. Yeah. It's insane. That is insane. And so people who are working at hair salons, uh-huh. I don't know who figured out how to do this because it seems pretty amazing to me. Yeah. But they are doing the same thing. They're manipulating the atoms and the bonds in your hair and putting them exactly where they want them. Do you think it initially was like, oh, we just discovered that this like juice from this plant or whatever does this. And then later it was discovered like, oh, it's this, it's like the disulfide bonds. Maybe so. Breaking and reforming. Because there's a lot of things like that 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 we discover as humans. Mm -hmm. And then only later do we understand. Like soap. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like we don't understand what it's doing until later, but we just happen upon... Right. And we've got, we've had so many years of experimenting, like, and just putting stuff on stuff. Yeah. It's Can we eat this? Amazing. Can we put this on our hair? Can we put this on our skin? What does it do? Probably tons of things that didn't work out great. Yeah. But then you're like, oh, wow, my hair's curly now. This is cool. Isn't that insane? So can you do a, this is maybe a dumb question. Can you do a straight permanent, permanent perm? Can you make your hair straight and then do it and then your hair will be straight? Yes. Usually it's called chemically relaxing your hair to mm-hmm. make it straight. 
and they use often really harsh chemicals to break the sulfur bonds. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes they use sodium hydroxide, all kinds of stuff for Mm -hmm. different types of hair. So it is possible to make your hair chemically straight. Okay. They just break the disulfide bonds. I don't know if they even bother reforming them in the flat. Got it. But they just use really abrasive chemicals that break the disulfide bonds. Got it. So yeah, that is possible. Interesting. That also sounds like the chemicals would be pretty crazy. Like, like mm-hmm. I would bet they could be dangerous. I don't know if you like. Well, the sodium hydroxide is very dangerous. Those mm-hmm. were very unwise methods of using to impact your hair because mm-hmm. it's caustic. It's basically the same as putting acid on your hair. It's very okay. dangerous. And then for perms, I asked your wife got a perm for like beachy waves yeah. that were so cute. But I said, how did your perm smell while they were doing it? And she said, super strong, smelly chemicals. And I said, like maybe rotting eggs. And she said, yeah, kind of sulfuric. And that is so accurate. That's so funny because she wouldn't know about the sulfur part, diphosulfide. sulfide. Because you asked her before she's probably even listened to the other one. Yeah. And so she could tell that had that sulfur smell. And they yeah. do use sulfur containing compounds that smell kind of rotten eggs because yeah. hydrogen sulfide is in rotten eggs to break the original uh, sulfur bonds. They basically put another sulfur end to get in the middle and break it up. I, I was out of town when she got that perm and I got back. And then I was smelling the aftermath of it. And to me, it smelled you a smelled little... smelled it too? I could smell it. Oh, yeah. I smelled it for weeks. Like, Whoa. seriously, a long time. It, the, even though she would wash her hair and it'd smell a little bit like shampoo, I could still smell the um, whatever smell it is. But I kind of described it like almost like burnt hair. Well, that's probably not wildly different. Yeah, because... it might not be. But the eggs thing wasn't part of it for me. I just smelled the... I obviously didn't smell the straight up chemicals. I just mm-hmm. smelled the result. But... Yeah, smelled well, like burnt hair. Let's get into that Uh-oh. then. That's my last section of today's episode. Okay. Damaging hair. Uh oh. Uh, Chemistry explains how heating your hair can damage it mm-hmm. and how perms can damage it. Mm-hmm. Which would you like to hear about first? So, heating and perms? Mm-hmm. Let's do perms first because we were just talking about perms and then do heating. Every time you break your disulfide bonds and reform them, uh-huh. no reaction is 100% perfect. Right. So every time you do that, you're reforming some less disulfide bonds. Okay. And that means that you're breaking permanently disulfide bonds that never can reform, mm-hmm. which over time makes your hair look limp and damaged. Mm-hmm. Wow. Now for heat, it's uh-huh. a different story. Hair is made up of proteins. Yes. Proteins have the primary structure, which is just a series of amino acids. It's basically what atoms make up this. Uh And then there's a secondary structure, which is sort of, I think, I'm not a biochemist, but I think Mm -hmm. the disulfide bonds between different cysteine amino acids technically fall into secondary structure. Okay. But if... If you're a biochemist and you know better, let me know. And then there's a tertiary structure, which is the overall folding of the whole chain of amino acids in Mm -hmm. space. There's also a quaternary structure, so that would be even more complex of the way amino acids interact with each other. Okay. But in this case, all you need to know is that that's how complex proteins are. They Mm -hmm. have their atoms, and then the atoms can interact with each other, Mm -hmm. and then the chain can start folding in on itself, and it's very complicated. Mm -hmm. And there's a process by which that folding can be undone. Mm -hmm. Then the proteins can no longer Mm -hmm. serve the purpose that they were intended to serve. Mm -hmm. And that process is called denaturing. Oh, I've heard that word before. Mm -hmm. Uh Uh-huh. And denaturing can happen chemically or by heat. Interesting. So if we apply excessive amounts of heat to our hair, we begin to denature our hair, Mm -hmm. leaving it weaker and damaged because we've literally denatured and damaged the proteins. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That makes sense because it seems like you you couldn't really mess with that basic of a building block of a substance like that right. with in that significant way without it having some like irreversible effect. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't just like do that. I mean, you could use a lot of analogies for that, but like anything you mess with at that basic of a level, the building blocks of it, um, it just seems like it's, it has to have an effect. Right. And initially you're just hoping to mess with the hydrogen bonds, but 
I think it's probably a pretty fine line of how much heat can be applied, reform hydrogen bonds, and not damage the hair. Yeah, yeah. So if you keep heating, you're going to denature proteins. And that's Mm -hmm. what some, I don't want to do any spoilers, but that is definitely present in some cooking and maybe a topic that was specifically requested regarding eggs. Whoa. Heat does denature proteins and you can't just apply it to your hair consistently hoping to do temporary change and not be prepared for the permanent ramifications. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Now there's one more thing. Uh, uh, this is for my curly girls. Uh-huh. Curly girls know you do not brush your curls. Well, really? Never. You shouldn't, if you're desperate, like you have a really bad tangle and you're going to do it in the shower when it's wet and with conditioner is the best place to use a brush. But ideally you just comb through it with your fingers. You do not brush it and you definitely don't brush it when it's dry. Wow. I did not know that. Why? Well, one time a boy in seventh grade who was kind of a jerk Mm. asked me that same question. And then not too long after we were going to a concert Mm -hmm. for band and my hair didn't look really good and I was young and I was stupid and so I thought brushing it might help. And then when I got to the concert, that boy told me I looked like a poodle because your hair just goes poof oh. when you brush it. Uh huh. Weird. Why? Because when you brush it, you are messing up the intermolecular forces that makes your hair lay flat and nice. That's crazy. Just brushing it. Mm -hmm. You're not even like adding some chemicals in there. You're just having something pass through Mm -hmm. and separate strands from each other. Yes. I think in curly hair, there's a lot more just than the disulfide bonds that we talked about that Uh form the basic shape that contribute to frizziness Mm -hmm. and all of that. But by touching it and messing with it you're damaging the weaker intermolecular forces that are at play even the dispersion forces like geckos have are Mm -hmm. present Mm -hmm. anytime two molecules are near each other and i think curly hair just relies on that more to keep those strands together yeah if straight hair was separated out it wouldn't matter but curly hair separated out is now a bunch of really small curls that are all fighting for space weird so curly girls don't touch or brush your curls after they're formed just don't touch them and you'll have a better curly hair day. Wow. Thanks, intermolecular forces. <laughs> this is so interesting and so excited for exciting for me because I have spent a lot of time learning how to try to have good hair days and I yeah. kind of experiment with it. Some hair days are better than the others. Uh-huh. And this really answered a lot of questions for me. Like, I'll have a really nice hair day. Yeah. And then as the day goes on, it doesn't look nearly as good. Mm-hmm. And it's probably because so many things are messing with the intermolecular forces in my hair. Mm -hmm. So I was, I felt very excited and enlightened to have answers for those questions. Yeah. So much of it, I mean, so there's a good amount of it that doesn't apply to me. I have a lot less hair and I definitely don't have any curls, Mm -hmm. but there is a lot that does just knowing about what hair is even like at the molecular level and what, what forces are at play. Here's a question I have that might not be an easy answer, so we might just not be able to do it. But I just realized the there's that talk about sulfates in shampoos mm-hmm. and them kind of like not being good for your hair. Mm-hmm. Is that at, in the same category of stuff with damage your hair and stuff? Is I want to look into it, but I suspect that if something can be bonded with a sulfate that has a sulfur in it, it could mm-hmm. also be bonded with sulfur in your hair, meaning mm-hmm. it would break disulfide bonds. Haven't looked into that, and uh-huh. I think it merits its whole own episode. Deal. Sounds good. So that's it. That's everything I have for you about hair and how we can style it and how we can hurt it. Okay. I'm going to do my best to try to recap it Okay, in my own words, but it's like three different or a few different things. Yeah. Maybe we should have let you stop along the way. Yeah. What was the first one? I want to do it in that heat order. Heat styling? Okay. So with heat styling... Because our hair has hydrogen bonding as part of it, mm-hmm. um, and it's semi-permeable, which means water can just hang out in there as well. Mm-hmm. And water is all about hydrogen bonding. Oh, a hundred percent. And our hair has hydrogens available to bond as well, mm-hmm. right? So whenever we apply heat, like a curling iron, a straightening 
iron, Mm -hmm. blow dryer, whatever it is. All that stuff. We remove the moisture, Mm -hmm. the water, which takes away those hydrogen bonds. Right. And allows us to shape our hair in a way we want to Mm -hmm. while those are gone. That's pretty close. Uh The only thing is new hydrogen bonds, new intermolecular forces are likely forming. That then keep it that way? Mm -hmm. Oh, got it. So it's kind of like in that that window of like removing them and doing stuff and then they reform and then it's like they reform in the way that it already was. Yeah. That that you just shaped it or whatever. mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Got it. And they can stay that way until something disrupts the intermolecular forces that have been newly formed. Like getting your hair wet or like intense humidity or Mm -hmm. something. Yes. And at the same time, because you're messing with things at the molecular level, Mm -hmm. heat styling your hair can damage it over time because right. you're, you're messing with the bonds you're messing with the intermolecular forces and every time we do that it can't necessarily just go back to exactly how it was perfectly that's actually a better description of the damage that comes with a perm oh so with heat styling it's actually more that you're applying heat mm-hmm. and that's not just evaporating water and helping newborns bonds form it also is breaking other bonds got it the permanent bonds that make up the fabric of our proteins because heat can denature proteins no matter what we're talking about whether it's hair or something else right or eggs or whatever got it yeah hair Mm -hmm. and eggs they're so close (laughs) together hair eggs denaturing proteins is everywhere yeah okay so that's what happens there it's the protein level Mm -hmm. and then when if you're doing a perm um you are, they're doing a chemical thing to get rid of all the disulfide bonds. They're able mm-hmm. to like, like just kind of kill those or whatever. Right. They break them. them. They use something that mm-hmm. chemically disrupts those bonds. And then they add them back in with a different chemical while your hair is styled in the way that you want it to end up being. Curls yes. um, or waves or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And so they are adding the disulfide bonds back in but like i sort of said about the other one in not the not right way when you're messing with that stuff even though you're trying to add those bonds back in it's not perfect you're not like able to get it right back to the natural state that it already is Mm -hmm. perfectly so that can cause damage maybe not something that you like super noticeable but maybe you got if you get like a lot of perms in a row or something like that Right. Your hair would just, it would have an effect. Over time. Over time. Mm-hmm. And that's hair? That's hair. You got it. Was there anything else? Was that it? Nope, you got it. You did, I did heat, perm, damage, and you did heat, damage, damage perm, perm damage. damage. Yep. Yeah. You got it. So as a non-chemist, what I would say is one of the most damaging things you can do to your hair is to dye your hair. Because just be you, you know? Yeah. Just be that, the you that you already are. Actually, that's a good idea to do the chemistry of dyeing your hair. That is true. Should we just do an infinite series on all the hair questions There's so many hair up? things. <laughs> I mean, I even want to ask about like hair products and shampoo and all stuff like that. Yeah. There's so much to do. There is. Oh, this is very exciting. Okay, well, we just added two more ideas to the list. And and hopefully we can kind of bend the chemistry to say what we want a little bit and say like, oh no. yeah, don't, don't dye your hair. It's actually horrible. It is not good for you based on my own anecdotal evidence but no we're not going to bend the science to our will that's how people stop trusting chemists oh oh we're in a society where we can't afford for people to not trust science okay sorry about that guys i'm not a scientist so don't listen to anything he says he doesn't know a single thing well now that you've had your nice chemistry lesson how's your week been it's been interesting it's been a, a week of uh the experience of home ownership, the downsides, I've had a few of those this week. Mm. We've been trying to relocate our washer and dryer to the original hookups in this house in the garage. Right. Seems simple. They're still there. The hookups there. Great. Uh, this week we discovered that there was no power delivery to the actual outlet for the dryer. Oh, man. So we got to get that figured out. We had to install. Even though there was power there once. There was once. Mm. And we had to, we already knew this part. We had to kind of get the 
dryer vent thing figured out and reinstall mm-hmm. it because it's not in good condition. You obviously want to make sure that's hot air is not blowing some weird place. Right. And then last night we discovered that the washer drain doesn't drain as fast as it should, oh, which no. meant that water went everywhere. <gasps> oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. It started creeping. I mean, it was like, it's a garage, so there's a that's a better place than some other places. Oh, right. Yeah. It's not, not like carpet carpet yeah, or yeah. in the house or whatever we got, i mean everybody's got stuff in their garage yeah started creeping toward my roommate's drum Ooh. drum set and thankfully he has it on like a a mat and the bottom of that mat is rubber and so oh, like that's good unless it was like an inch of water it would not touch his drums at all so that was great but so that's my week kind of has been around that project and it's had its ups and downs so hopefully yeah. hopefully next week i can report that it's all wrapped up and everything's great and that my life is is whole again. Good. Well, that's a hope for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What a crazy week. It really was. Hopefully, it was less crazy. Um, so, if Jam was a little loopy, it's because his mind was half thinking about how he could fix his home situation, his yeah. home life. Yeah. I was like, what kind of like bonds can I break? What kind of sulfur can I dump down this drain to get this <laughs> thing figured out? Um, what about you? How was your week? This isn't really about my week, but this past. Black Friday. I don't uh-huh. believe in Black Black Friday shopping unless it's extreme circumstances. Was but it Black Friday or Cyber Monday? It was Black Friday. Oh wow! My roommate went Black Friday shopping with her family, uh-huh. and I live. I live. I don't think I've told anyone this, but I live with a couple. Mm-hmm. I rent out their spare bedroom, mm-hmm. and that couple has two big dogs, mm-hmm. and they're super cute. I can put a picture of them up. Oh, that's a good idea. But they also track in so much crap Mm -hmm. onto our hardwood floors Mm -hmm. and the three of us aren't like the cleanest people naturally Mm -hmm. so our floors were not in great condition Mm -hmm. and i felt like none of our vacuums were really taking care of business like totally i tried to vacuum once a week which is not enough when you have two dogs and the vacuum cleaner could not handle the sheer volume of stuff and so we got my roommate went and she got a gift for the house mm-hmm. of a Roomba mm-hmm. and she didn't know it at the time, but it turns out it was a gift for me mm-hmm. because it's like my little pet Yeah, and I love it and I research about it and I keep up the maintenance uh-huh. and it cleans our house every day. Yeah. And I thought that this was a luxury purchase, uh-huh. but it is a basic life necessity purchase. It's pretty incredible. We have yes. one too, and it's like, it is a game changer. If you have one dog that sheds a lot or more than one dog, you need a Roomba. Mm-hmm. Just wait for next Black Friday. You can get one for like 150 bucks. Yeah. That's a year from now. Save up $10 every month uh-huh. and do yourself, give yourself the gift of a Roomba. Thanks, iRobot, for all you do in my home. Mm-hmm. And in my heart. Mm-hmm. And thanks, Jim, for coming, hanging out of my office and learning about chemistry. Anytime. Or and, once a week-ish. That's okay with you. Yeah. And thanks to all of you listeners for tuning in and for getting excited, hopefully, about the chemistry of hair with us. Melissa and I have a lot of ideas for topics of chemistry in everyday life, but we want to hear from you. If you have questions or ideas, you can reach out to us at Gmail or on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Chem for Your Life. That's Chem, F-O-R, Your Life, to share thoughts and ideas. If you enjoy this podcast, you can subscribe on your favorite podcast app. And if you really like it, you can write a review on Apple Podcasts. That helps us to be able to share chemistry with even more people. If you'd like to help us keep our show going and contribute to the cost of making it, go to ko-fi.com slash chemforyourlife and donate the cost of a cup of coffee. This episode of Chemistry for Your Life was created by Melissa Collini and Jam Robinson. References for this episode can be found in our show notes or on our website. Jim Robinson is our producer, and we'd like to give a special thanks to A. Kalini, who reviewed this episode. Mm-hmm.